Welcome to the OpenPNP Vision Compositing video. Let's start with a simple thing like picking and aligning a simple resistor. So what's wrong with this image? Yeah, the crosshairs are all lopsided and the DRO is also indicating an odd angle. That's because this is still the nozzle rotation and not the part rotation. Let's fix that. This is actually the first goodie of this package. Go to the nozzle, to the align with part switch. You might read the tooltip as always. Then enable it. And don't forget to press supply again as always. Go back to the part, pick a new part, test the alignment and voila! Everything is now aligned because the nozzle rotation is now offset to the part alignment. The DRO is also indicating the correct angle. Now let's go big. This is actually the largest part in my project. And as you see, I only see the body. The part is so large, it, there's no chance I can align it with the camera. So I need to jog out to the pins to actually see them. We can go to the packages tab and in the vision compositing tab and see that the camera view is only showing a very small part of the overall chip and it indicates no camera roaming. So this is actually the central switch of this feature. The roaming radius on the bottom camera allows you to use multi shots. If set to zero it is effectively switched off but if we set it to the allowable radius where you can move around with your part on the nozzle, then multi-shot is enabled. And as you see, if I press align now, the chip is perfectly aligned. I can recompute this and I now see how it has detected suitable corners to align the part. And also note how the roaming radius is now indicated with that thick red dashed limit and how the chip is barely within that radius. This radius has to correspond with your camera pit so you don't physically bump into anything with your part. Another alignment. And this is also supported by the pipeline. As before, it asks you whether you want to move to the right spot. But now you can also cycle through all the shots in this particular vision. And you can use the pipeline as before. Let's go to another example, just a fed with an asymmetric um, shape. On one side it is narrower than on the other. Another one, a BGA package. All these packages are just invented to test the features. These are not real packages. Another one. Align it. Voila. So let's choose another alignment angle first. Go to the Packages tab and again see the overview and you see how it can pair up corner shots into one shot. But we can force it to use single corners and recompute so you see it will use individual corner shots. You may have noticed how it went around the part this is actually optimized. It always uses the shortest combined path using a traveling salesman algorithm. The blue corners are extra corners that you can enable for extra accuracy. If you enable it, it goes all around the part now.
That's another problematic part, this small FET. As you see, the normal min area rect uh, algorithm can misjudge it and choose the wrong way around. Now, if we can solve it by going to the automatic mode, but first it doesn't allow us to place it. That is because it can only capture one side, because this little pin on the other side is, um, is obstructed by its body pins. So we need to improve the pick tolerance or lower the pick tolerance so it can actually see only the part of that small pin to grab it. Et voilà, this part is aligned too. And just another example. And the crazy one. This system also allows for parts to be non-rectangular, like this cross-shaped part you couldn't wouldn't be able to align it properly with the min area rect algorithm that was used before in open pnp another example with staggered asymmetric pins no problem for the algorithms and the very strange part indeed completely invented It showcases how the algorithm can even detect the inside corners of pads. That is because the outside is actually asymmetric on this part and this is detected by the algorithms, so it has to use the insides. Another example would be a very huge part like this rectifier. Again, it uses the inside part uh, corners of the pads, but this time, because the roaming area is not large enough, it can't go all the way out to the outside corners, so it has to use the inside corners. Again, this is supported. Let's retry at a different angle, and again, it works. You can also force it to use the corner algorithms on small parts. Just go to single corners, recompute it, and you see how it can capture multiple corners. This can be used to improve the precision on difficult bodies. All this is based on footprints, so we have to enter them into OpenPNP now. But that's not so bad. I'll quickly demo how you do that. There, just take your data sheet and enter the most important data. You can read them all off your typical data sheets. <coughs> You could actually make that one a bit skinnier because what you are modeling is the pins, not the pads on the PCB actually. Et voila, we're finished and we can use it to align the part. This illustration shows another advantage of multi-shot vision. Typically you have wide angle cameras but wide angles then introduce parallax errors. If, say for instance, the IC is slightly tilted, it is seen at different distances on each side and introduces a surprisingly large placement error. This is not so with multiple shots. Because they look straight up, there is no parallax or only little and the little error there is, is the same on each side. Now let's go practical. This just shows how it is done with a real um, <coughs> IC. 
let's use the extra shots and do the alignment again. Here we see an, uh, an example where you can use the so-called air corners. These corners are in the air and they are only defined by the pins that come alongside the body. Again, demo how the pipeline is actually stepping around with the part when you switch from shot to shot. And you can optimize your pipeline for each of the shots. It should be mentioned that the standard pipeline can be used unchanged with this new multi-shot algorithm. The crucial stage, the mean area rect stage, has been changed to only detect um, partial rectangles, corners. So it should remain compatible with whatever you do before or after that stage. Another feature, when the part height is unknown, it is automatically detected by the autofocus if you have the autofocus enabled. And again, because it now knows the geometry of the part, it can do so at the corners of the part. This gives you really very accurate alignment. Again, to demo the extra shots, now it goes all around the IC and you see how it optimizes the motion, optimizes its path using the traveling salesman algorithm. So that's about it, thank you.